Today, we're going to be going over six of the biggest mistakes that I regret in Rise of Kingdoms so that way maybe you can avoid them. Okay, so here's the thing. I've been playing Rise of Kingdoms for 1,130 consecutive days, okay? And I didn't start making content about Rise of Kingdoms until maybe probably over a year into playing the game, okay? I played the game for a while, and what a lot of players don't know is I spent a majority of my early game as pretty much free to play. I think I spent like less than a hundred bucks in the game at that point. I think most of that went to like Minamoto and like some other random stuff, okay? I had no idea what I was doing. I watched some chist videos in the early days okay I bought King's coronation in the gem supply and that's pretty much it and because I was more of a casual player back then and I know I know you're looking at my kill points and saying Omniarch you're still a casual player I get it okay I get it but because I was a more passive casual player I logged in a couple minutes per day I didn't really take the game that seriously and I made a bunch of mistakes in the early game that I regret now and number six on the list here is going to make you cringe I, I swear to God the last thing we're gonna be talking about in this video you are going to actually I'm warning you it's it's actually embarrassing but first let's start with my most recent mistake okay this is the most recent thing that i actually regret in rise of kingdoms and that's investing in isun sin and zenobia now i did this and i mentioned this in a previous video but the reason that i invested in zenobia and yss is because in my previous kingdom a lot of players migrated out and there weren't that many players who had the garrison meta okay and i wanted to compete for zenobia because i thought okay i could be the garrison player for my alliance alliance or whatever the case might be I figured hey most of my commanders are already infantry based and I've got decent infantry equipment okay I've got a couple of legendary accessories so I figured hey why not and this wasn't when Zenobia first came out mind you this was after a couple of months after the game had sort of evolved a little bit and everybody realized okay Zenobia YSS is the meta it's been the meta that's when I invested in them and I think the reason that I regret doing this is because a it's a huge investment it's so many sculptures to expertise two legendary commanders and B, I really haven't gotten very good use out of them because of KVK tech and also VIP. I don't have VIP 17, which means I miss out on that 5% all damage boost, which you really do want to have if you're going to be a garrison captain. But in all honesty, it's all KVK tech. That is the biggest reason that I don't get use out of my Zenobia YSS, even as somebody who buys those pop-up bundles in KVK. Getting improved morale all the way up to 10 is going to give you 10% bonus damage and this is so far into the kvk tech and you have to push this tech pretty early on and if you're not going to max out this tech at least by the time that king's line comes around or even sooner than that when there's important fights happening there's a good chance you're not going to be a garrison captain and that's sort of where i landed here so because kvk tech is so game changing that even though i have the meta garrison commanders with decent equipment that i can put on them and I can fill it with a ton of T5 troops that I have, I'm still not a garrison captain. And because of that, I regret it because basically if I want to be a garrison captain, I have to well up every single KVK and it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it to me. It's a lot of money to be spending on a mobile game. Realistically, even as a content creator, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars, every single KVK. It's just not worth it to me. I'd rather spend that money on something else. Or if I'm going to spend it in the game, I'd rather spend it on something that's going to last like investing in a another commander or investing in equipment something that will last a long time kvk tech is temporary and that's the number one reason that kvk tech is actually no exaggeration ruining rise of kingdoms so devs if you're watching everyone knows this you know it i know it uh, the audience knows it the players know it kvk tech is ruining the game you need to change it soon let's move on to my mistake and biggest regret number two and that is crafting shio's return now this was i believe my first piece of legendary equipment and i didn't really know better okay it, i thought hey it's a legendary piece of equipment it's for infantry i can craft it let's do it and the thing is like the stats aren't bad right Right? infantry defense is great and eight percent of it is great it's it's a great stat but the problem with that is if you go in and you take a look at the special talented frost treads you can actually get seven and a half percent of infantry defense from this purple piece right it's it's half a percent of defense that is like a single talent point okay is it worth all the extra materials and all the extra like it's it's crazy how expensive legendary 
materials or legendary pieces of equipment actually are now sure obviously the shio's return has the archer health so if i were garrisoning my city for example then yes that is a much better piece of equipment or if i have a mixed flag or whatever the case might be but we've already talked about the fact that i'm probably not going to be a garrison lead so really it only comes into play if i'm garrisoning my city and you know really you don't want to get rallied okay regardless of what's on the wall you can check out my video where my city got zeroed okay it doesn't really matter if you're offline you're gonna get zeroed regardless so i think for a majority of players shio's return is not worth it just go with the frost treads and get that special talent moving on to my biggest regret number three and that is expertising minamoto now here's the thing about minamoto okay when i expertised him when i decided to pull the trigger and finish him off okay he was somewhere around five, five, four, two or something like that. Okay. That's where he just landed naturally. This was before skill resets were a thing. So I had no choice, but to sort of just either expertise him or not. And the thing about Minamoto, right. And the reason that I expertise him is because this second skill only had a single point in it and I wanted to double it. I just wanted to get it all the way there. I wanted his expertise. And here's the thing, right? Minamoto is actually really good in the early game. He is, he's good in pre KVK in the beginning of the game. He's good. Even in probably KVK one, you could make the case that Minamoto is a solid choice, right? He is super high single target damage factor. And early on, you don't have that many other better options, right? He's got the skill tree. He's got the cavalry tree Two really excellent talent trees. There's a lot to love about Minamoto and people forget that this fourth skill causes the target to take 30% increased damage from all sources for three seconds, right? So if somebody's getting swarmed down and your Minamoto pops this debuff, like it's good, right? It's good. There's good things about Minamoto, but the problem is the value for him really falls off after the five, five, one, one point. And that's where I tell players, if you're a low spender or whatever the case is, if you want Minamoto, then, you know, get him, but keep him at five, five, one, one. I'm pretty sure you can get that configuration for about 27 or $30, something like that. And that is way more, uh, you know, reasonable then like, what is it like $200 or something like that to expertise him. It's good for, if you're doing things like Soroli, right? You can use Minamoto with Cao Cao. And if he's expertise, you will notice a significant bump in damage in those specific game modes. Okay. I remember when I first expertise my Minamoto, how much of a damage boost there was when I was doing things like Soroli. So you will notice an expertise. Don't get me wrong. An expertise Minamoto is definitely more powerful than the five, five, one, one, but in KVK three and beyond, he really falls off, right? There's just really not a great reason to use Minamoto at that point. You can get a Saladin William both at five, 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 one, and that's going to outperform anything with Minamoto by a mile, right? It just is. It's going to be more tanky. It's going to be more supportive and Saladin is an absolute beast. And uh, he gives you way more stats, right? Minamoto gives you 20% attack, 10% March speed. He gives you 5% March speed and an extra 20% defense on top of that. Right? So, and I know like we're comparing a commander that you can just straight up buy to Saladin, but that's the thing you can get Saladin from card King or from the daily special bundles. And from there you can invest universals into him. Okay. So if you're thinking about maxing Minamoto, just consider the only time that you should be doing is a, if you're a mega whale or B, if you're whaling at the beginning of a brand new kingdom, that's the only time where I think you're going to get a ton of value out of him out of the first one or two KVKs. And then after that, he's going to fall off. And because of that, I regret buying the bundles to finish off Minamoto. And I sort of knew I was going to, when I did it, I sort of knew I'm like, ah, you know, I'm probably not going to get that much value out of him, but my OCD wanted him finished. So I did it. Mistake number four that I made was in the early game when I was still a casual player, mostly free to play. I basically skipped all of the early game commander wheels. I don't even know if I summoned, uh, e song and I think Alexander, I did summon. I don't remember if I summoned e song or not. I can't remember, but I basically skipped those early wheel commanders because I had the mindset of, okay, the game begins when you get T five, because that's when you can start to be competitive. That was my thought process at the very beginning of the game was make my troops as powerful as they can be because T five is sort of an endpoint, right? It's a goal that you can achieve when you see that you say, okay, um, I'm going to just go all in on getting the best troops possible. And then I'm going to start to focus on other things. Right. And because of that, I was spending all of my gems during the more than gems event on things like books of the covenant and VIP, 
right and vip is a good investment especially vip 10 12 14 things like that you get really great value from those vip milestones but things like book to the covenant the problem is that a if i wasn't lazy i could have grinded it out would i have done that realistically no i think that you know if people say oh just grind out forts like yes you can do that a majority of players probably won't a majority of players will probably spend some number of gems on books of the covenant so i'm not saying to not do that but what i am saying is that you should be investing in commanders early okay invest in them early because the wheel of fortune gives you good value and i missed out on that good value early on for commanders like Esong and most likely alexander i don't remember what alex was at when i started to invest in him but these early game commanders are incredibly good and you can get decent trades later on using t4 if you know what you're doing if you have decent equipment yeah you're not gonna win all the fights right you're not but t4 are so much cheaper to heal and to tra train more of that it almost doesn't matter right if you get even trades with a t5 player using t4 that's a huge win that's a huge win okay uh, or even if you're close even if he beats you by 10 15 percent like still massive win for you okay so keep that in mind t4 can still sort of compete okay you you know if you get swarmed by t5 obviously you're crushed right but again t5 are so expensive that there's still something to be said about focusing a lot of your resources on good commanders in the early game because in the late game it doesn't matter if you get t5 if you're putting t5 behind a minimoto tsao tsao in season of conquest like you're gonna get crushed and it's gonna be expensive and you know you don't have any good commanders to sort of back you up so that's a big mistake that i made and i didn't really know too much about the game back then i think the biggest commanders that you don't want to miss obviously are esong alex and guan i think these are just universally known to be some of the best open field commanders that pretty much everybody is going to get value out of so don't miss out mistake number five that i made in rise of kingdoms is i think that i waited too long to migrate out of my home kingdom for those of you guys who don't know my home kingdom was 10 62. and i should also preface that by saying when i joined the game 1062 was not the newest kingdom it, it just wasn't i i actually created an account in an older kingdom because play, people that i played with in real life already had accounts on that server and when they made their accounts they just picked a server sort of randomly i think they there was no like rhyme or reason as to why they picked 1062 i think they just made an account there and then so did i so i actually missed a lot of the early commanders in that uh in that server because you know i didn't join the latest and greatest server so keep that in mind you always want to join the newest server and then migrate somewhere else later because there's a lot of goodies at the beginning of a new server okay but I think that I waited too long to migrate out of that server. Uh, and in hindsight, it, it makes sense. But in the moment, I had no idea what I was doing. Okay. I was loyal to my home kingdom for artificial and sort of stupid reasons right and i think that a lot of players when they first join they want to be loyal to their home kingdom especially because there's a lot of players there that you form you know friendships with and bonds with and all that stuff right and so you know the, the, it makes you sort of sad to think about leaving that kingdom that you started in but once you do once you make that jump you actually sort of evolve into a player of kingdom whatever 1062 into a player of rise of kingdoms right you actually become part of the bigger community you're not just in this one tiny little kingdom you actually can meet new players in new kingdoms and you'll be in different kvks and you'll see how other kingdoms are structured and sort of what makes a good kingdom a good kingdom instead of just having your one narrow biased view of the game from the lens of that one single kingdom and that was one thing that i I didn't really understand i thought that i should stay in my home kingdom because the people that i played with at the beginning of the game were there and i didn't want to sort of break that loyalty but in reality that's stupid okay it's dumb you, you should go where you want to go obviously you should play with friends that you want to play with but if you're in a dead kingdom you're more than likely going to have less fun in the game okay if there's no one there it, there's nothing to do okay so you should leave a dead kingdom there's no point in having loyalty to a, a dead server it just doesn't make sense you should enjoy the game you should find new experiences you should find new people to play with because i promise you there's a ton of really cool players in this game who are in other servers and if you never leave then you won't ever meet them or you'll meet them just talking shit in lost kingdom chat which hey let, let's be real that's fun okay everyone likes to do that but you should actually play with them in their server at some point okay so if you've been wondering if you should leave your home kingdom this is your sign you you probably should okay you probably should and this is it 
this is the biggest mistake that i made in rise of kingdoms that i regret the most i don't even know if i've even talked about this my biggest regret is Cao Cao. he is my biggest regret because i put hundreds of legendary commander sculptures into Cao Cao. universal hundreds of universals into Cao. probably like 300 or something insane into Cao Cao in the early game okay and the reason that i did this is because i thought a couple of things one okay i remember watching chiskel in the early game way before i even considered making content about this okay i remember him saying that he thought that for free to play players or low spenders he said uh and i don't remember what video this is so i, I don't know right but he said something along the lines of thinking that calorie was probably the best choice for free to play players and back then keep in mind like we were using epic commanders okay so this is like he, he was using all the data that he had at the time okay and, and so like i'm not blaming him at all okay and chiskel has done incredible things for this community and i've learned a ton from him so shout out to chiskel but i remember watching that video and thinking okay i'm a free to play or low spender i should invest in cavalry commanders and i also remember him saying that you shouldn't use universals on gold key commanders but i thought okay well if i don't then it's going to take a really long time for me to max Cao Cao. And I realized that Cao Cao is much better than the epic commanders that were available to me at the time, like Pelagius, for example. Okay. So my thought process was, okay, I'm going to invest full all in on cavalry. And if I'm going to do that, I should invest in cavalry commanders. And I don't want to wait a year and a half or two years to expertise Cao Cao. I want to start getting value out of him now. And so I started dumping universals into Cao Cao because I thought that there's just no way that a, I'm going to win a mightiest governor for Saladin because back then that was like all the rage with Saladin. Right. And in my server, there, there was just no way. Okay. So I thought there's no way I'm going to spend enough to win a Saladin mightiest governor. And I don't really have that many other options, right? Uh, there's Takeda, there's freaking Genghis Khan. And I thought, Hey, I'm not going to spend enough gems to max out Khan. It, it's just not going to happen. And in hindsight, I'm glad that I didn't because Khan is not a good investment, but I thought, Hey, Hey, Cao Cao, I already have some skills on him because of the gold keys, right? I'm already partially invested in him. I might as well just go all the way. And I invested hundreds of legendaries into him and I do regret it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You should be able to see it here. It's not, this was so long ago that it, it wasn't uh, recorded here. So I can't say exactly how many, but I do know that it was a significant amount of universal legendary commander sculptures. And now I have 523 of them just sitting around doing nothing don't put universals into Tao Tzu, okay just don't do it the only gold key commander you should even consider would be charles martel and i already made a video talking about why you shouldn't do that for him either okay anyway guys drop a thumbs up on the video if you found this useful or informative or if i've inspired you to not make a bad decision for your account subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace